Hi Steve, uh, just to say there's a lot of people been asking about the girders because obviously I did a lot of shopping the other day uh, but we really went for the girders so do you want to tell them what actually happened when we went for the girders? Yeah as you can see I did get them, um, I had to cut them down at Tams, I'll, uh, we took a video of that so I'll show you that. They're fantastic, uh, happen to be exactly the same uh, size, 140 deep by 70 wide. There's three here, they're very, very heavy. Basically, I put them on here to get them measured up properly, but also uh, it shows you how they're gonna sit in the wall. Uh, there's three here, there's one on top. I don't know whether you can come around and- uh, Coming around now. Have a, have a quick look at that. Um, there's so one on the house. So you can see that, that uh, the girder that is there is the same that's here. And uh, once I start to cut that hole out, that should slot in. We've also got another one as well. If you want to come back to the girders then. How many do we actually need, Steve? Well, um, minimum five. Uh, that'll get the job done. Um, but obviously we've got to lay stone either side of that wall. And that depends at that point exactly how thick that wall is. If I get five in, it means I can get my uh, the show stone, the outside stone, and then uh, get that set in. That'll leave a distance on the inside of the wall, if we all follow that. Um, and obviously I've got stone to put on, so that'll give me the exact uh, measurement with, so that the, the, all the stone matches in, so it doesn't look like there's any girders in there. Um, so the width, basically, what's that kind of covering? I mean, there's a lot of female people out there, perhaps like me, wondering. So yeah, you've there's got... also a lot of female builders as well nowadays. There are, definitely. Um, uh, well, it's going to cover uh, about 600 mil uh, all in, and then we'll have about 100 mil either side of the girders to play with uh, with our stone. Um, small delay on these, uh, no surprise at all. Um, the supply system in Italy has gone kaput, much like anywhere else in the world at the moment. I went to get these at the steel mill and um, they quoted me minimum quantity. Uh, they did have the steel there where I've been buying it before without any problems. Uh, we did come up against that problem. We then went to one of the other big suppliers in Pescara and um, the prices, wow, uh, quoted me more or less 100 euros a piece. Was it the same it's, length, Steve, or wasn't it sort yeah, of longer? Similar, similar length, but this is um, what the, the, the quote was for a slightly smaller profile. So this is the profile. It's called an H profile, um, obviously, when it sits on I'll, its side. I'll try and get in so people can actually see that what, for what, us. Um, that's why it's called an H profile. Gives you the letter oh, yeah. H. But obviously what we do with these ones is we sit them on their edge, end to end, like this. Um, so we'll have another two, or maybe even another three here. So uh, going back to the, the price, uh, would have worked out um, about 100 euros each in the end, and that's without EVA, so that's 20% on top of that as well. Although we do, with the building company, we can claim that money back every February. Um, but still makes a lot of difference. We managed to get these for 25 euros each. Uh, it's a good price, um, just a little bit of cleaning up to do. He didn't, all... he didn't have a lot though, did he? No, <laughs> just, just enough to do this job. Maybe if I needed one more, I can pop along and get another one. I've got one to cut, which is three meters long at the moment. And then that'll give me five lengths, all the same. And then, uh, and then you can watch me put them in. Hmm. What's the first part after you've got them all ready? Uh, what do you have to do for the, for, you know, to create the opening of the wall? I, I mean, I suppose I'm asking the basic questions okay. here. Uh, no, basically I've put, already put a couple of holes in the wall. So they're my plumb line uh, holes, horizontal plumb line holes. And what that'll do is uh, that'll indicate on the outside of the building and on the inside of the building exactly where the top of the girder is going to sit. Okay. What you want to do is get these all in level. The first job is putting the first uh, two in. So does that mean that you just remove so much of this stone? Yeah, what I'm going to do is attack the stone from uh, the outside first. Um, we'll get the motor picker on the wall and we'll go in uh, 220 mil. Uh, it's a bit exact, but I think that's how far the second one sits in when it 
it's going okay. to be set. And then I can put pack that with concrete, um, get them all flush, get them nicely level. And then when it comes to do the inside ones, I go inside the house and I'll motor pick from the inside of the house. And because of my two plumb lines, I can, I'll can i know exactly where the top of these are sitting. So I'll, I'll bump into them straight away. Do I get an opportunity to wear my crash helmet? Because I've got one, my builder's hat. Yeah, you should be probably uh, wearing a crash helmet, Lynn, when you're doing your vegetable garden. Well. I probably should. Or even maybe when I'm filming, <laughs> sort of going over the uh, mud and yeah. the ramps and yeah, everything so else. As Lynn is indicating, it's very much a building site here. And um, obviously we've got the dog going around at a thousand miles an hour. Um, many people say to me, you're crazy doing the building work on your own, you're working alone. It's Surely that's dangerous. Well, let me tell you, the most dangerous part I've had and the more injuries I've had are, is when I'm walking around the garden with a cup of tea. What's the Italian word for these? Because remember, I'm learning my Italian the best I can. Yeah, so, the, uh, I mean, English people would call these RSJs, reinforced steel girders. Right. Um, we would call them in Italy Ferro Travi. Ferro Travi. Um, if you want it in Italian style, Ferro Travi. But Ferro is metal, isn't it? Yeah, so Ferro is the steel, the iron, uh, the base material, and um, the Travi is the, the lintel part. Right. Uh, but we can all, I mean, there's also concrete uh, that you can get here, and they're quite reasonable, but um, this is obviously much, much better for us because of seismic situation and everything. Yeah, obviously above the windows, uh, we are up to 147 lintels. So where you would put one over the wall uh, to put a window in in England, we have to do six or seven. The specification is for steel on the door openings um, on this side. Okay. Because if we're on the side of the building, um, then we want to keep it a structurally sturdy as we possibly can over the top of the windows over the front doors on the front of the building which are much uh, thinner yes then uh, uh, st uh, concrete lintels are perfectly okay but these are specified the size is specified the thickness is specified and the actual steel is specified and, and that's all specified by the architect or was that specified by uh, sort of plan the central planning uh, the planning in Kieti, they agree it uh, then the architect comes back to me, gives me a drawing, tells me exactly what steel I've got to go and get. And yeah. I have to go and get that. I can't go and get something yeah. that looks like that and isn't that. And I mean, this really is definitely not a DIY project. This is a major construction with Builder Steve. Yeah, no, this, uh, this, is, um, this, is, this will be hard work, but um, that's all we're here for. If it stays sunny... Uh, it's quite enjoyable. When it's, uh, <laughs> you know, last year, three feet of snow. Uh, if you're interested in what we're doing, please subscribe and support us. I mean, it'd be nice to be skiing, but... Uh, <laughs> We've got a job to do, haven't you? Well, good morning, everybody. Um, on the inside of the house, uh, obviously we're preparing to open up this uh, double door entrance way so that we can fit the, uh, the new lintels, the new architrave, the steels that we showed you uh, earlier on in this video. Um, on the inside, we've got we had an existing window hole here, which we're going to have to do something with because obviously our architrave is going along the top there. I think you can see in the video that the orange line mirrors the orange line that's on the outside of the house, and that basically is exactly where those lintels are going to sit. And if we look up here, this lintel is going to go to here. That's where I put the hole uh, through my plumb line hole, uh, which will make the horizontal outside. Now. Uh, the entrance is going to be uh, 1,600 wide here, 1.6 metres, and those walls will slightly taper in to the door that's going to go on the outside, so that when you open those doors, the doors will just recess into that angle so that you won't be knocking them as you walk out. Uh, it's something to think about when you're doing uh, double doors. Anyway, and as we're doing this from afresh, we can, we can tailor make it. Um, as you can imagine, this wall is going to finish here. There's going to be a corner here, and then that's going to go through to where the double doors are going to be fitted. So in a sense, I don't want to fill in the whole lot, I just want to fill in this part here. So this is going to be, all these rocks are loose, and they were just put up there for security purposes so nobody got in through that window. Um, but now I've got to remove all these, and we'll put in, I'll do some measuring and a little drawing, and then we're going to fill in this lot with, uh, build it back properly with, with stones and, um, and obviously sand and cement. Um, we're not going to be exposing the stones on this back wall, I don't think. Uh, some of the walls here, uh, some of the stones have been quite um, badly eroded. Um, obviously when they're original, they, they originated 
uh, from thousands of years ago. Um, we don't feel that exposing the stone here is going to look go uh, good enough or look what we want. So I think we're going to have a finish on this wall, so it doesn't really matter how clean this edge line is. Uh, but nevertheless, the job today is to, is to get that line up there, filled in there, and when, I'm going to go through it process by process, so you're going to see stages. I'm not really a lover of uh, the fast uh, forward film that you see on YouTube a lot. Um, I just prefer to do it in stages, show you each stage. I'm doing it on my own anyway, and then I can talk about it as I go through, because often as not you can't talk about it unless you do a voiceover. Uh, when the when the film is speeding through and uh, it's not really the way I like to work um, but anyway I'm gonna start getting on with this so uh, I'll catch you later okay so uh, I've removed all the stones there were loose ones that have come out more than ones on this side um, they're all out and all the loose ones are out on that side there's one big one here but that's a tooth stone and that goes all the way out to the front of the building I'm gonna leave that there and uh, work my way with bricks and cement under that uh, around it and on the top of it. I've put a plumb line in here, I don't know if you can see that, that's just a piece of corder, uh, a couple of nails in the wall and that's at the moment it's perfectly level so uh, measure twice cut once, everything that's level um, it, it, like this, if it starts off level it should finish off level. Um, I'll show you the stones that we've taken out and the level in a, in a couple of pictures anyway so uh, anyway moving on. Okay, so we've started putting in these stones. What I'm just doing is layering it up. Um, it doesn't have to be too smart because this is all going to get covered with uh, in Tornico, so it'll be internal plaster. Uh, I've got my little angle going outwards, so that gives us at least a start. Just trying to keep these stones as flat as we can so that we don't run ourselves into uh, typically any problems. So I once watched a program about stone masonry and it said if you pick a stone up, use it. Uh, I tend to pick three up and I use one of them and it seems to work for me and then what we'll do is we'll just keep following this uh, this plumb line up and just build properly and get the important thing here is to get the cement right into the back of the stones um, because you're building uh, with stones if it was with uh, uh, bricks obviously we'd be doing you know you, you need to do a more uh, perfect job but uh, with this it's basically getting a good mix of cement in as far as you can and really stomp it down and that will give us a nice strong base uh, in order to hold this uh, these first couple of lentils up. Anyway, I'm going for lunch so uh, see you after. basically where I wanted to get to uh, by tonight so that's filled it in just waiting for that to, to set um, I'm, I did quite a strong concrete sand mix of two to one so um, basically that, that will that'll give us uh, quite a lot of support once that's gone off um, I've rough pointed it um, it, it, it doesn't need uh, any real finishing on it all this pointing that was originally here is all going to be covered over and if it's rough pointed it's good for the intornico, the finishing plaster or the undercoat plaster that is to have something to lock onto so that will give um, it's all sealed and uh, that will be a good base in which to plaster over all these bumps all these raggedy stone edges are all things that will grip onto that plaster and uh, bond it all together uh, before that plaster goes on anyway we've got to we're going to have to put some steel on this um, steel mesh uh, which is part of the seismic requirements the earthquake requirements that uh, Kiati insist on part of your planning project and uh, so anyway this is far from finished but uh, it's enough to give us support for that lintel to go in and that's going to start happening tomorrow so uh, anyway I'll see you tomorrow well, morning everybody. Um, we've had breakfast this morning. 
and Steve has now returned to get on with that opening outside but I thought it might be quite useful just to have a little look for myself as to what he did on the inside. So we're just here now at the moment, uh, we're going inside so whether it's a bit dark for you or not I'm not quite sure. Let's have a look. Oh yes, now we can see what he's been up to. You can see the orange line which is obviously the marker that he's created and you can see obviously the new plaster that he's put on for filling in that hole. So anyway, I'm going to go up and see what he's up to now. So we're just moving around. For any of you that perhaps didn't see... Oh, uh, we've well. caught him going up the ladder. So he's actually preparing to do some work. So we're going to go and see what he's up to in a second. Obviously that's probably the starter to get that girder in. Oh, can you stop for a second there, Steve? Maybe they just want to say hello. Um, I'm trying to video the best I can. <laughs> I did tell them it was noisy and you were actually wearing your goggles because there's a lot of dust comes yeah. out and lots yeah. of tiny bits of stone, isn't it? Yeah, got um, well, my trusty Titan here. It's a fantastic tool. Um, just does the job without shaking the whole wall apart. Obviously what we're looking for here is already, this wall's already prepared and finished and the idea is, is not to upset it too much. Some of this walls has actually got steel wiring uh, which has been tied together inside the stones so any structural defects whatsoever are now locked together. Did um, you put all that steel wire in Steve when yeah, you redid the walls? Yeah, put it in about a foot deep, wire it round the stone into another stone connected to uh, maybe a small hairline crack that you can see perhaps that would uh, affect the building um, you know, later on in its life, and uh, there's a, and then you can um, you can chemical glue in uh, at certain points where the where it joins, um, and uh, it sets like rock, and then the, and the cable seems to get a little tighter around the rock. So it, that's not for seismic, is it? That's just for sort of uh, the normal building of this particular wall, building the wall back up no, again. It is a seismic requirement. Um, You've got, with seismic, we've obviously got seismic rings, so we've got the steel in the floor, steel in the roof, some steel in midway. But on the actual preparation of the wall, when we motor pick, so we're motor picking this side uh, this far in, motor picking from the other side this far in, and a bit further in some cases. Obviously some of these stones have fallen out. I'm moving up a little bit, Steve, um, so I can see that hole that you've actually done, so people can see. In answer to the question, you've got to stabilise the wall, and there's several ways in which we do that. Um, we, we're using a Kerikol product, so the Kerikol product is, is, um, is, is mortar, is lime mortar, is uh, interior plaster, they do primer plaster, so undercoats. Um, they also do a wire system. And the wire system is integrated within the wall. You know, you don't see any of it when the wall is finished, obviously. Um, it's galvanised so it doesn't rust. And obviously what it does, it stabilises the wall completely. So this wall will be more solid than it's, than it's ever been. And we're only using Kulchi in here, which is the lime mortar. There's no mix with sand. There's no, we're not putting any rubbish in it. It's pure lime mortar. I'm just going to go down here so we can, we can sort of scan yeah. a little bit just to we, see the wall itself. So we can see the difference of sort of what you've actually done in the past, as in, you know, how you've yeah. repaired the wall. And obviously we've left this section yeah. uh, because you knew that you were going to actually take it out. What, what you'll see is if you look around here if you can get that you'll see that where my finger's pointing yeah, you'll see this it. little surplus this is surplus lime mortar and what we'll do when we finish the job is just go around and brush all this off. I want to have a go. I did tell them and I've got a machine, but my machine's a little bit smaller than the machine that you had. Yeah. But it's oh. still very heavy, isn't it? Yeah, no, you're, you're actually going to be using this machine. Not I'm oh, using oh it. okay, everybody. So, uh, do you want to have a look at the machine that I'm going to be using? Because yeah. I think it's quite big and yeah, it's so quite it's, heavy. Uh, so it's basically magnesium. Uh, so do you want to point it at the camera, Steve, or you could point it at me? Oh, yeah, yeah that's it's made kind of, of magnesium, good. so it's supposed to be light, but this is still 15 kilos. When you're holding it upright, a lot of the time it uh, takes it out on the you, shoulders. You, and you're going to be doing this with me under supervision, because yeah. obviously I am definitely the assistant. So 
we've gone in about 100 mil at the moment. I think we can see that. Um, bright sunshine at the moment, so if it's reflecting, then um, either I'll use this piece of footage or not. I've got to go in over 200 mil. Uh, Lynn, if you can just stay out of the shade, that's okay. it, because all I can see is body parts. Um, and I'll be working along to 2.5 metres, so 200 mil in. 2.5 meters that way. Um, I'm not going to put any supports in the top part of the wall here. Um, there's no real need because we've got half the wall that's still holding this side of the house up. So as long as we don't go all the way through the wall to the other side, uh, then that should be sufficient. I'll get a couple of girders in. Um, and what I really need to do is to make this part here as flat as I can so the girder just slides on nicely. So a little bit of decent preparation there. Um, the, one of the problems with doing this, obviously, I've got um, you know I've got solid rock, I've got um, pointing, um, I've got some is some of the rock is more solid than the other. So where I've chipped this out nicely, um, this might be an absolute pain to get through. But I've got a crowbar up here and a long bar. So if we can go around some of these and just pry them out, in a sense that would be easier than trying to constantly um, hammer hammer these out with the machine because it's uh, what we're trying to do is not disturb um, the, the above wall in any way. This is just a temporary solution, just a bit of support, that's all it needs. Uh, we're, not, we're not suspecting the wall's going to fall down. Oh gosh, no. All we're doing is holding that brick up, stabilising that brick, and whatever needs to be done, I'll keep checking it, we'll do. But that's going nowhere, I feel a bit happier about that. Will you do that all the way along, Steve? Do it as we need it. Yeah, okay. Um, because I want to get this job done, uh, I've got to get uh, the um, architrave in, the lintel yeah. in, and I've got to get the cement in. Once I've done that, obviously everything will be back to normal. And as I, uh, as I start to do the, to get the lintel in, these will all come out in one go and I'll just push the lintel in. By okay. the time I get that in, support, level, cement, uh, which is where you're going to come in very handy. I just don't know it yet. Oh my gosh. All right. Then all right, everybody. we're moving to the other side. So I'll see you on the other side of the... Uh, okay, okay. Yes. Right, so don't let, the, um, don't let the machine punch into your stomach. So you will need to shimmy over more. Don't let it shimmy. Which way? Right or left? Shimmy left. This has got quite a kick to it, so uh, that's why I'm trying to get you to go into the um, the couch, the Thank lime mortar first. The lime mortar, no, go, go down, go exactly where I said. Right, hold the handle with your left hand. This bit here. Yeah, hold the hand with your left hand, hold the handle properly. Hold it so you mean to hold it, yep. Right. Hold the back handle properly with all your fingers on, grip both equally. Now pull the switch. Back. Yep. Right, you won't be able to get it out if you go all the way in. Oh, okay. Oh God, I can't get it out. Yeah, that's your first mistake of uh, drilling school. You can't do that. So right. I'll turn the camera off. Oh, it's loosening up, Steve. I think I'm doing it. It's getting a bit heavy. Oh, a nice big bit came out there. I think I might give it back to you. It's getting heavy on my hands. <laughs> I have done a little bit, though.
<laughs> we'll keep that machine going all the way around the edge of the bucket. Yeah, and now wiggle it all the way around. That's it, just keep it going, momentum. Try not to uh, destroy the bucket. So if it goes in straight, if it goes in straight, it's fine. Right, I've got the, uh, the chain winch ready for the girders. Uh, I've got to set that lot up, it's on a piece of scaffolding. I'll see how best to fix that in. Uh, I've got to go up there to get the uh, cement and the stones winched up. But if Lynn could do one thing, and that would be uh, just film the inside of that hole, have a okay. little delve around in there and see. It's quite a big uh, hole, isn't it? Yeah, you could get inside that now, Lynn. Come on, in you go. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I'm just walking around. I've got to be careful because obviously there's a few things on then the scaffolding. Then if you can just film winching up, yeah? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to be winching up. Don't fall down the hole. Okay, I have to get round here to let you have a good look. Okay, now we've seen the hole. It's a reasonable sized hole there, isn't it? Not too much filming. You've probably heard that, not too much filming, but I think you need to see. Okay, that's it, folks. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to take the fact that the machine slightly broke as an omen. Uh, I'm not going to use my big machine on this wall. I just feel it's going to upset too much of the stuff above. Um, instead, I'm going to use a crowbar, a big hammer, chisel, and I've got a long bar, uh, a yard and a half, a metre and a half long. So I can wedge these three out. So I'm going to put a couple of small wooden columns in here and here. This one's already loose, so he's mm -hmm. going to swivel out this way. Uh, this one's going to swivel out this way. That's big, that one, isn't it? Yeah, these three big stones here. Um, it's funny because I saved something to show you, and I don't know whether I've kept it. What was it, like a stone? It's a keystone. Yeah, I've dropped it. Um, I, t I spoke in the first program about how these stones are kept in. And it's with a little keystone. It's, they're shaped like like an arrow point of a, a, a you know red Indian bow and arrow point, but slightly wider, slightly more shell like. And they just pop them in. When they put this stone in originally, they did just put one in there. You've got to go and find them, take them out, and then this moves. Look. Oh yeah, it's rocking. See that moving? Without that keystone out, it won't move. It's exactly perfectly in. I'm sorry, I've lost it because it was lovely. Okay, just going to get these uh, one of these girders in and see if it fits all right. Wow, it's heavy. Is that what you want? Nice. No. I'll just be filming. Yeah, and, don't, just... and don't say a lot. If it doesn't fit, I'm doing it again. Okay. I'll a two man job. This butt fits. Good job, Steve's got his hat on. Just gonna reposition myself. Right. Yeah. Come on. Nice. 
Right, it is going in, so it's not going anywhere. Tonight. And that's where you want it. I'm not allowed to talk much at this moment in time. It's concentration time. You can probably see Steve's actually chipping away in a little bit of stone so he can get the girder in nice and neat and tight in that little section. One piece of stone. Oh nice, that looks better. Right, so we've probably got to do... You've got to do this side where I am now. Yeah, I'm going to work my way. Stay there with the camera. Okay. Just in case we... Uh... I'm just going to... I'm almost lying down, folks, to do this. Mm -hmm. the only proud stone I've got there. And do you want it to be on that stone? No. I want that out, really. So, it should. I want to get two steels mm -hmm. in this slot. And... At the moment, is it that piece there? That one there, I think what I'm going to do. Are you going to take it out? I'm going to take it out. I thought he was going to take it out. Yeah. And I'm going to stop the camera for a yeah, second. Yeah, stop the camera oh. for a second. Come back to me in a sec. Okay, so this hole is nice and big now, isn't it, to put... Whereas <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot bigger than you had intended, I well, think. Well, no, I knew it would... It's the same happened to the window lentils. Okay. Everything came down. The problem is, I'm going to watch wider span here, and I've done the physics. So I know what weight will bear across a span mm -hmm. in, uh, in this kind of scenario. And as you move one stone, another stone wants to come out you as know, well. I'd, I just want to make sure that this goes in and it's done. I don't really want to get into a situation. Give it a go. Nice. I'm just going to stop there. Reposition yourself. Oh, You've got to man. be a bit of a contortionist for this, haven't you? Yeah. It's my lumbar. Butting up against that. 
Yeah. Is that what you want it to do? Not really. Oh. A bit more coming out. Well, every little bit matters. You can see. Yeah. See this? Small bit. Yeah. yeah, it's good that that crowbar's red because we can see it really well. Okay, I need... I think I need another inch, half inch to go in. That's, we might be in there. Oh, that's nice. Oops. Tape measure, folks. This is getting good. Right, this would be a, a bit of an average, so okay, that makes sense. What does it measure? Well, it's it's 140 inside this part of the stone. Okay. So now we're going on the other side. And it's it's pretty much 140 there as well. Oh wow! Press this on here. Hopefully the bubble sits in the middle. Okay. Have I got to get a bit closer so we can see the bubble? I'll tell you what. There's your bubble in the middle. There's a nice whisker on. You've got a bubble almost in the middle. Uh, I'm looking for just a tiny, qu like a quarter. Mm. I, need, I need about a quarter higher. Quarter inch, uh, six mil. Gonna get the bubble again. I'm going to get closer so we can see. Okay, we're not bad, we're nearly there, but I'm not absolutely on it. As um, you can see, folks, he does want it right. I don't... Oh, that's a bit bigger. ...at the end of the day, but if I cement under there, uh, leave that in there tomorrow, I can come along and take this out and cement under there. Oh, I get it, yeah. So... So it's just really to hold it to the correct level. Yeah, the level is everything. Get the level right and uh, everything else will fall into place. I'd really like to see the bubble. Yeah, well, you, you don't want it at the moment. Oh, okay. That's actually, I've got a tiny bit of adjustment up there. So I'm gonna use that piece. And this piece. at the moment. Oh, I thought it was. No, it's not perfect. I need this perfect. I mean it. Uh, I've got, now I've got it raised a bit. So I'll turn that off. I've got a thicker bit of one end than the other. And then we can chuck that in there. Leave everything in there. Do not touch. All right, okay. The bubble's out again. I don't really want any rubbish on there to throw it out either. I think Button wants to know what you're up to. I've got a tiny whisker. It isn't a lot. And have you, you've obviously put some more cement in there from what I can see. Yeah, I've got two bases of cement now, but the idea is, is that leave these alone, let that set, let that set, give these some support here, because obviously this is um, all this lot. Yep. So that we know we're taking care from what's above. Um, is we can put some cement in here, put some cement in here, and put some cement in, in there. So is that going to be your next bit, once you get those pieces of wood in, put the cement in? Yeah, be, it's just to give this some sort of support. Right. 
and then what you'll just leave it until the morning or something well good morning from a, a snowy ripino um i think i predicted snow yesterday when i was talking about it on the first floor of the scaffolding i managed to finish the two girders that i wanted to get in there um, but uh, snow stops play today uh, we had an avalanche last night not a literal avalanche just a lot of snow it's dumped it down on us and in places we are uh, four feet thick um, w what it'll do is enable me to to do some work on the inside of the house the outside seems quite stable um, there's not much I can do cement won't cement won't set and stuff like that so uh, we'll get on the inside of the house we've got some damage on olive trees but we'll wait to um, wait to see when the snow goes see what the real damage is and and, and they're strong trees they'll they'll come back nicely what I would say is, uh, you've seen us sitting here before doing a chat to you. Uh, we thought it would be quite fun to work, just to actually show the difference between that sunny day when I had the short sleeve top on. Uh, this is our table, as you can see. Look, Steve is showing the table. We've actually got coffee cups sitting on the top here with a biscuit and a biscuit button. Um, and sort of what a difference the day makes, I suppose that's what you could say. And, uh, oh, but it's got her biscuit here, Dad. Oh, she likes the digestive, unfortunately. Um, well, anyway, as Steve said, he's managed to complete the girder on the exterior, which is great, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, tough job. Coffee that we needed. Yeah, this um, these coffee cups uh, come out every time we need a special cup of coffee. I, like I don't know what's special cups. about these coffee cups, <laughs> but something I don't know. I'm I'm just getting something what in you my get head. To the end. I but don't I know. Do... I just don't know what it. Lynn loves these coffee cups. They but... come from a, a, a particular brand of coffee that <laughs> obviously we can't talk about. I mean, they're not sponsoring us. We we don't get paid by them or anything. But I just like I just keep seeing these coffee cups everywhere I go. Button's um, gone on a bender, by the way. Yeah. By the way, this is the vegetable uh, garden. Um, if you remember, I did plant. What? I did plant some things, some lettuces. Uh, they are probably still okay underneath the, this. Uh, the snow. Button just is doing zoomies. She's having a lot of fun. this. Oh. Yes, down there. Yeah, yeah. So, Steve, should I sort of mention yeah. about basically we love hearing people's comments and we've had some fabulous comments. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if you do subscribe and you like what we're doing, obviously we're doing a lot of what we're doing. Um, but um, if you could pass it on to people that you know that may be like minded and might like the videos, uh, we've got five videos out at the moment. And if you like what you're seeing, then uh, please share it. it it's going to help build the channel. It just means that I can be uh, be more prepared to make uh, better filming. Um, what I want to do is to improve quality on the filming all the time, and we'll tell you. And uh, and that's going to take some time, but uh, we will get there. And I think also, you know, we are restoring our house, and as Steve said, we're actually enjoying doing the YouTube uh, vlogs uh, for us, but also for you. So, as you say, subscribe, press that like, uh, ding that bell, do everything you need to do for us to support us because um, it's important. But anyway, so from me and, and me. From Steve, we will, oh, and of course from Button, we shall say mwah, goodbye. See you another time. Chibidiano dopo. Yeah, Ciao. That means see you another time. Okay, I'm going to pop a little uh, picture of one of the trees in particular on the way back. Yeah, I mean, just even this, doesn't it? So, uh, unfortunately, this is one of the casualties from last night. You can see the snow sits on the canopy of the tree and it's taking out both of the main branches. It's just laying on the ground. Always a bit sad. What we'll do is uh, the tree will be perfectly okay. We'll take it right back to the stump and we'll let the new growth grow, which I can already see on the other side. Um, normally we'd cut those um, new growths off um, and, let the, uh, and let the canopy flourish for the summer. And obviously as we move into November, we'll move into olive picking. But um, no, it's particularly sad to see this, but it's part of, it's part of being here. The, um, when the weather comes in, it can be absolutely brutal and it's not just snow it's wind um, and rain um, these trees can suffer from too much water as well 
and also not enough water but in general the weather is fantastic here so this is uh, is just proof that we don't live in total sunshine but uh, I suspect the mountains have had two or three meters of snow even maybe more we can hear uh, the snow plows all over the place at the moment in order to get the the roads clear this one thing that they're very good at doing in this region is clearing the roads almost immediately um, so that people can still move around go to the shops and whatsoever um, and uh, I saw some of the snow plows last night on standby however I do feel that in a couple of hours we are going to be back in a snowstorm uh, which won't help the situation, it'll probably exacerbate it, but um, it is what it is here and you just have to get on with it. We're very positive and um, all the olive trees will get a prune this year anyway, so well one or two of these trees won't look the same for a good uh, four or five years, but um, that is just the way it is here. So uh, for now I'm going to sign off. <laughs>